Yes. So I'm here with the vacuum stand. Um, this comes in a big box, as most of these esophageal stands do. Um, and in the box, you have the stand with the releasing system, the blue tube for the suction, and a Y connector, which you need to connect the tube to the vacuum pump, which is it is really important to apply good suction. Um, the first thing you need to do when you take this out of the box and before you um, introduce it, is that you need to flush the different channels of the VEC stand. So first you flush the blue channel. There's this very um, handy blue, a purple connector piece, which you can put at the end. Just use a lure lock, flush this with some water. Then you take this purple connector off and you put it um, next to you. You need that once the tube has been rerouted via the nose. Um, what is important then is also to flush this channel that facilitate, facilitates um, deployment of the stand later on. And you have to flush this channel, which is the channel that is used to put the guide wire through. So once everything is flushed and the guide wire is in the patient, you need to remove this uh, iron um, thing from the stand. This is just for packaging, so it stays straight. Once that's out, you have the guide wire which you introduce in this blue um, piece here at the end, comes out at the other end, and just um, as you would do with a dilator or another um, a normal stent, you introduce the stent into the patient. If you are then happy with the position, either based on your endoscopic view or um, on your um, screening view, as was nicely demonstrated in Vinny's uh, video, you can ask the nurse to um, sort of deploy the stent. It's a distal release system. So usually I do it under endoscopic visualization. So I put my endoscope in the patient next to the stent and you can really nicely see deployment of the stent. This orange connector is then just released. The nurse holds the stent and you can then deploy the stent by pulling back the left hand in this case. And if you yeah, have the end of the stent so the other end in the video. So if you can move the camera to the other end. Yeah, so I'm just pulling my hands together and what you can see happening is that the stand is deploying. And you can, do, you can stop any time and reposition it. And then you just go on. And there's a sort of point of no return here because if you continue, the proximal flange will also deploy. Then the stand is inside you and you can remove the whole connecting system, making sure the blue tube stays in place because that's connected to the stand and you don't want to pull that. So it's just like with ERCP, you take out the connecting system or the introduction system, but keep the blue tube in place. And as I said, the stand is seven centimeters long and this uh, part is five centimeters. That's covered with the sponge on the outside. The diameter is 14 millimeters and the flanges are three centimeters. So that's also good to have in mind if you're working in a narrow esophagus, for example. Uh, and once you have um, placed it, you can immediately connect it to the vacuum and then the stent will even deploy further. Um, I will just do it a little bit with my fingers and you can see, put it down a little bit how it looks uh, and you can endoscopically check if it's in place. I usually say that you it's better to place it a little bit more distal because you can always pull it back a little bit. It's more difficult to pull it, push it in. Um, but actually that's the demonstration of the vacuum stand. <laughs> 